Our women might make up 41% of Singapore's tech workforce today, but social and gender barriers towards women's participation in STEM, or that's areas of science, technology, engineering and mathematics, still remain. To shed some light on this matter, we're joined by Dr. Mary Rogers, Principal Research Scientist from global healthcare company Abbott. Dr. Rogers, you have been at the forefront of significant scientific breakthroughs. How would you characterize the challenges women face should they want to have a career in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics? Pleasure to be here. And this is an important question to discuss because everyone's unique experience is what ultimately leads to these broader societal effects of uh, lower numbers of women in STEM. And I know that from my own personal experiences that myself and other women in STEM have experienced self-doubt and what you could call imposter syndrome. And that really leads to people being less likely to take the risks that you really need to be willing to do to be able to be successful in STEM. Um, just as an example for my own career, I think when I was finishing college and looking at what I wanted to do next, I was talking to one of my female mentors and she suggested I apply to go to graduate school at Harvard, which at the time I thought that's going to be too hard. There's no way I'll get in. She gave me some good advice. She said, well, of course, you will not get in if you never apply. And that really illustrated to me the fact that if you're willing to take a risk and you're willing to try and put in the work that you do have the opportunities in, in front of you that you just haven't been looking at before. Um, so I did get into Harvard and I did my PhD there and I, I hope that I can encourage others to do uh, similar risk taking in their own careers. I suppose the question is that uh, we all feel self-doubt. We all feel we are we have this imposter syndrome that you mentioned. The problem is, is this more specific to women than it would be to men? It can be. And I think that one of the ways that we can try and change that is by giving women more opportunities to have female role models. I think in my own career, that certainly made a difference. And I think that as people become connected with role models that maybe look more like themselves, that we can try and change that narrative, um, especially in people who are early on in their careers. And to some extent, it also goes beyond just an, a mentor who's in the field, but also friends and family can have a huge impact on how successful successful woman is in her career. For instance, in my own experience, when I decided I didn't want to go into chemical engineering because it was not working out and I didn't like it as much as I thought it, I would, it was actually my father-in-law, who's not a scientist, who suggested to me that, you know, maybe you should just try a different kind of science and see what else is out there. And just to even be thinking about exploring things in an unusual um, career path that's maybe different from what other people, um, particularly other men in my field, had followed is what really opened doors for me to just open up and think about alternative paths because everyone has a unique way of getting um, to where they end up in their career. Uh, Dr. Rogers, uh, I'll pick up from a recent study in Singapore highlighting that women left STEM careers because they felt they did not, and I quote that, they did not belong. Uh, how much is wanting to belong important to women who do want to stay on this career path? Feeling like you belong is a really important way of being able to do your best work. If you feel supported, then you're going to do fantastic things in any career that you choose, particularly STEM. And so that's why I'm speaking to over 200 teens um, tomorrow morning, actually, um, to share my own STEM journey to help encourage women and girls to pursue this kind of a path, but then also to uh, explain why Abbott is sponsoring a global high school internship program. Um, that's something that's important to Abbott as part of our 2030 sustainability goal, to have more young people joining STEM careers, and particularly women and girls. Initiatives to build interest in STEM one is just one thing. Uh, girls can do well in their studies, but in careers like yours, there has to be very real interest and passion. How do you translate doing well academically into a sustained life interest in pursuing uh, careers in STEM? That's a great question because really having one 
spark of interest early in your career can make such a huge difference. But what really makes that turn into a career path is sustaining that interest. And that's where exploring opportunities is really important, like an internship, for example, at, at Abbott is one of the places where that can happen. And to actually put yourself in the shoes of the kind of career that you might want to do in the future helps you understand whether or not it's something you'll enjoy and continue to be passionate about and sustain over the course of a career. So really having opportunities to be able to try things out, maybe find out that this isn't the right path for you and be open to trying something different is how we can kind of sustain that interest instead of just shutting down and closing doors after you realize just this one thing you tried didn't work out. Um, we have to be able to encourage people beyond just that initial interest to something more sustainable. Oh, thanks very much for all that, Dr. Mary Rogers, Principal Research Scientist at Abbott. Thank you.